using the creative tools. In this video we're going to look at just using the creative tools panel and we're going to have fun just exploring some of the features within it to change the look and feel of one image and make it in this case quite a moody mystical will be the main word we're going to be using here uh, a mystical feel to the image so without further ado let's dive right in okay with this image what i'm going to do is i'm only going to work with the creative tools this image here it actually requires a lot more done to it, but just to show you what we can do with the creative tools alone. I am actually going to create another layer, but I'll tell you the reasoning for that when I do it. Okay, the first thing is you can see the sunburst here. And for me, I'm dying to put sun rays in, but at the moment, I'm going to leave them. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into dramatic just to push this slightly. So we're just going to have fun with this image. And it's just picking out certain areas. I'm then going to dampen that by going into the mystical tools, but I'm doing it just to bring through the image. So there we are, we've pushed the dramatic amount to 27. Remembering I can jump back and forward at these at any point. The matte look in the creative tools will give me that effect, and then I can fade it and fade it out quite Instagrammy for some of these images but for this image no I'm going to go a little finer with this so I'm not going to use the matte look in it mystical is the one I'm going for and then I have color styles texture overlay glow film green and fog and you've probably played around with these for me I'm going to introduce a fog using texture overlay though and Again, as I'm doing it, I'll explain why. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into Mystical and I'm going to create a completely different feel to the image using Mystical. So I'm going to take it to around there and I can lift the shadows or deepen the shadows to around there. But what I'm going to do, if I double click on that, that's the default setting. I'll take it back just a tiny bit. Nothing in here. I can take it the warmth or pull it back to the blue. I may go back to the cooler colours, but we'll see. Mystical, the colour styles and the LUTs, I'm not going to touch just now either. So I'm now going to get into texture overlay and I'm going to load a texture in here. And the texture I'm going to load is fog. And we have it there, fog too. So I'm going to click open. And you'll see where that's arrived on the image. So you can guess by this what kind of image I'm going to create. I'm going to turn the opacity down and I'm going to go straight into the advanced settings but before that I'll show you what the zoom does. The zoom, I can increase the area the fog is covering or decrease and then you see the, the outer edge of the image that I've brought in. I'm going to set that at default though for this image and what I'm going to do is push the contrast with this. And what I'm doing just now is I'm just trying to build a base for the image before I start editing. Brightness I may take down, I may take it up slightly. Saturation and hue I'm not going to touch for this one. I'm going to go back to the mystical and increase that again. Shadows, pull back even further. So I'm building the image and I'm jumping back and forward just to get to the feel that I want. I also don't want this just as dark now that I can see the basis for the image. So what I'm going to go back in to do is texture overlay and edit the mask. This time I'm going to use the gradient mask. So I'm going to decide how far down I want the gradient to go. So I'm going to say start there and then come down to around there. So everything beyond this point here is 100% then going through. If I show you the mask, you'll see everything beyond here is 100% and then the graduation starts from around here to the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the opacity of it just to increase the fog that's there. So you can see the kind of look I'm going for. Here's the image we brought in. Here's the image now. Let me pull that back and as I say I'm dying to put a sun star in here. 
There is a small one there, but I'm dying to add to that. But I'll explain what I'm going to do when I do that. With this and with the dramatic, I'm going to edit the mask. I want this to become slightly more vibrant again. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to go brush. I'm going to go erase. And as I paint this, there'll be a slight difference in it. Not much at all, but there will be a slight difference now. Just enough, as you know I like the subtleties in my images, but just enough to bring that through. So if I click the mask, just to check, there we go. Uh, text in mystical, same again, brush, erase, but this time I'm going to take it down to around 58. And that's removing the mystical tool from this. Just to bring it forward. See it painting in there and it's not too much. Does it draw your eye away from the image? Yes, it does slightly. So what I'll do is I'll go into paint and I'll take that back up to about 66. Increase my brush and I'll just do one sweep over it. And I'll check my mask. Take it back again. Erase, and I'll just do one sweep back. And for me, I'm quite happy with that. Okay, I can go in and add a goal and soft focus bright, soft focus a soft goal, and I'll show you what all three of these do. So the soft goal, you notice there's an increase there, and basically it does what it says in the tin in the soft go, but it's not something that I'm after here. So if I get into soft focus, it softens the entire image. Is that something I'm after for this? Yes it is, but I might as well show you what soft focus bright does. You can see the difference here. If you watch the sun star between the two of these, the sun star increases with the soft focus bright. What one am I going to use for this? For the feel of the image here, I'm going to take that back actually to around there and I'm going to leave it on soft focus for this just to get a more mystical look. I might as well use the term that I'm looking for here. Next, I could add film grain to this, but for me, it's going to ruin the final effect I want in this image. Right, this is as we are nearly done. What I'm going to do is the sun rays. For the sun rays, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a new layer. And I know we said we were just working in the creative tools, but to get the effect I want, and I'll tell you the reasoning behind it. If I put in a sun ray onto this layer, and you know where it's going to go, so if I put that there, and I take up the amount. It takes on, I'll just close that, it takes on everything else I have added to this image on using the creative tools. It takes on the mystical, the texture, the dramatic, it works with them. It's got synergy with them and works with them. I don't want that to happen. What I want is the sun rays to be a little sharper than they are at the moment and that's why I'm going to create a new adjustment layer for them and you'll see the difference uh, between the two when I do this. So I'm going to reset that, close that, I'm then going to create a new adjustment layer. Now I'm going to get back into the creative tools, I'm not going to work with any other tools. I do for the final image, I do want to add uh, AI structure but because I said I would stick to the creative tools I'm going to work with them just to produce the image. So now I'm going to go in and add the sun rays and if I place sun centre bring it over to where my sun star is anyway you'll notice that the effect is sharper. Although it's a diffused sun ray the effect has more presence within it. So I'm going to turn that off there so that you can see what you're looking for when you're using the sun rays, if you're going to use them, use them so that they complement the image that you're putting them on. I'm going to leave that at that for the purposes of this video. I may go in and adjust a couple of things, 
but I'm going to, because we can see the default setting here, if I increase the penetration of it, way too much. So I'm going to bring it back there, advanced settings, number of sun rays is at 50, and this is the default for all the tools. If I increase the number of sun rays to say there, and I think, no, I want to take that back, I don't have to remember the number, I can just double click on the center point here, and it resets back to 50. So what we're going to do is, I'm just going to play with this, just to get it, and each time that I'm doing this, I'm looking to see where the sun rays fall. Do they work with the image? Is it too intense within the image? But I'm looking for, as a mystical image, as I said, I'm looking for that from what we had originally, what we started with. And I did like the image we started with. I'm just showing you how you can work with the creative tools alone. I'm not going to adjust the sun radius. I could pull it back just to there and we've got a sharper, finer sun star. I'm going to reset it to default, which is at 40. The glow radius I can pull back, and by doing that, it will create a slight contrast just here, because we're lessening the effect of it, but I'm going to take that back up. And I could go all the way through these and show you what they do, but you're better to get in and explore the software to see what it can do. What I'm doing is I'm creating different images, but by limiting myself to, in this case, the creative tools. Place Sun Center, quite happy with that. So the image we started with is this one, and just by using the creative tools alone, we have ended up with this image. Quite a difference and quite a difference in effect and feel and mood to the image. Last but not least, but what I also can do just by using the creative tools is go into the LUTs and I can cycle through all the LUTs to see if there's any one of these LUTs that complements the feel of this image. And there's a couple of scenes just when I flicked through that there that I actually quite liked. But it's just to show you. So I'll go through a few of them but just to let you see. So Anaheim, Bakersfield, Depends the effect you're after and the mood you're trying to portray. I actually quite like Santa Barbara with this image. And so on and so forth. So I, for me, I'm going to take Santa Barbara. So we started here and we ended up here just by using the creative tools. It's fun to play around and limit yourself to see what you can create just by sticking to a set of tools. Hopefully you enjoyed that video and hopefully it gives you a small insight into the creative tools and in this case I limited myself to the creative tools except for adding the adjustment layer and the reason I added that I explained in the video. Uh, it's something that you've got to think about, something you've got to judge when you're doing it. If you don't get what you are, the effect that you are seeking by adding it into the layer that you are editing, try adding another adjustment layer and putting the effect on there because it will adopt a different feel using that tool. And it's something, I think it's something worth trying. It's worth going through every panel and just limiting yourself to that panel to see the images you create. It's fun to do, it's fun exploring the software and it gives you a better in-depth look at what the software can do itself and basically in this case your imagination. I didn't go too drastic with this but I had fun doing it. If you've enjoyed this video, big thumbs up. If you'd like to check out some more videos in the channel below and consider subscribing, that would be absolutely fantastic. Thanks again for watching.